so I've come down this morning to uh, a place called Cliff Pools, which is on the Isle of Grain, which is North North Kent. I think it's North Kent. I think it counts as North Kent. Um, and I've come down here for a sunrise shoot. It's more of a recce shoot more than anything. Uh, and I'd like to just point out at this point that I'm really not a landscape photographer. Like I enjoy taking landscapes and I think it's good to experiment with taking landscapes and other forms of photography but this really isn't my kind of thing. However, I've got a project that I need to do and I thought this is probably the best location for me to do it and I thought I might as well just make a little video whilst I'm here as well so And that, that is quite stunning, but I think I'm going to head down this trail a little further and see if I can get to the point that I was at last time. Because that pool is quite big. And the issue that I thought I might have is obviously, uh, depending on whether which side of the pool I'm on, uh, obviously sun uh, rising it needs to be in the same general direction. So. That's a good shout, just to carry on down this trail a little further. And then from there, I guess we'll see what we get. So Cliff Pools is actually an RSPB reserve. And they use the dredgings from the River Thames to build it up. Um, which is handy, because the River Thames is just next door. This really isn't very far from my home. It's like a half hour drive from my front door. And I think there's a very much a, a thing about having to travel far and wide to get really good images and go to all these crazy places. And I think there's very much something to be said about shooting close to home. And I only really started to realize that when I watched a documentary about Don McCullen. Uh, documentary photographer, wartime photographer, who came back and he wanted to photograph all the sort of towns and villages around where he lived and like where he grew up. Um, and it's funny seeing some places like Eastbourne, which again isn't very far from me, it's maybe an hour and a half drive or so, um, maybe a bit more than that, but even, even to that point, you know, it's not like it's not the Alps. And I'm not saying this is the Alps, obviously. Um, but I mean it is quite incredible and you can see the sun just starting to rise behind me so I think I'm going to have to try and find this place fairly soon because otherwise it's just going to burn through all this mist which would not be ideal and it would not make the like 4.30 start worth it so I've found a spot but it's not the same place I found last time it's just a tiny little hello some big old birds flapping about in the water. It's not the same spot as it was last time, but it might provide a better look out across the um, pool. And this is literally the view. I'm just coming up here. So that is literally my view at the moment. Um, so I don't know whether to go for a very sort of minimal long exposure or to carry on round. This is the thing, I really just don't know what I'm doing when it comes to landscape photography basically and I'm not even going to try and provide any insight into taking landscape photos. I mean obviously light, composition, you know getting your settings right and things like that all comes into play. You do that whatever you're photographing, or you should be anyway. It's just the practice. So I wouldn't expect a landscape photographer to go and do street photography or documentary photography or portrait photography, you know? Some horses over there. So that was pretty cool. 
some horses. Yeah. Horses are easily my favourite animal. And anybody who follows me on Instagram will see whenever like Chris Burkhard or at Finn shares any like horses uh, photos with horses in it. I just love them. I just love the yeah. They're easily my favourite animal. And, like film war horse is obviously very sort of uh, dear to my heart. And uh, yeah. So if nothing else, I've seen some horses. So I am having real troubles finding this spot, which is annoying because. That's just annoying, isn't it? Unless I just look on maps. I should just a quick look on Google Maps. I think it's saying that it is that way. Um, so I'll go that way, I think. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, going well. Um, please don't bite my head off for not being very prepared at all. I guess when you do street photography, you could just go somewhere, and I guess anywhere you can do street photography. Or any sort of documentary. This is very much more something that I think I need to work on, is my planning and pre-production. Aha, here we go. So, I think this is where I was last time. So yeah, this is a little bit of information about the area. Um, pause that if you want to read it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's quite a cool little place, I think through here is where I need to be going. This little trail should hopefully, fingers crossed, take us down to the edge of the pool, which it does. Excellent. I think I'm gonna try and work some compositions around here. I mean, this is incredible. Like, I, it doesn't really show up on camera at all, but just how foggy it is. And you can see where the sun's rising in this blown out bit here. I think I'm gonna go for something quite minimal. Maybe down here. A nice little traffic cone in the water. Wouldn't be Kent if there weren't traffic cones in the water everywhere. This is really sort of, it's quite eerie, <laughs> to be honest with you. Sort of like Walking Dead kind of vibes around here. So what I'm doing here is really quite simple. It's just looking straight down that little bit of, I guess you'd call it coastline. It's not really coastline. It's sort of like the water's edge um, on this sort of beach. And it's just quite a nice little, yeah, it's just quite a nice little angle. Um, so I've got it on a five second timer. Um, one thing I didn't really account for is this lens weighs an absolute ton. So I've got to think about if it's shifting on the tripod a little bit. So I've got it on a five second timer. And then I think I'm gonna just sort of explore some more sort of finer details. I think that's all you can really do in places like this. Um, I really like this here, this sort of boulder here, um, sticking out of the water with like nothing behind it. So I might get down um, and get a wide lens on there and try and get those three three rocks. I think that would look really nice as a, as a little composition. Obviously with the mist sort of starting to look a bit blue over there because this is getting so pink. Um, so I think that's going to take a bit of post-processing on uh, in, in Capture One to try and get those sort of pink hues across. But I think I'm just going to work on this composition a little bit and then go from there. So I just very quickly changed my composition because I wanted to get more of this sort of curve in the first sort of part of this this uh, bit of beach on this on this pool. And I think this might be the composition that I'm going to go for for now. Um, it's sort of quite nice. It just sort of curves around and then curves around again and just disappears into the into the mist so again just I'm shooting at f8 um, ISO 50 20th of a second five second shutter yeah I think that works so I've got my tripod set up now I've got it on its its small sort of travel travel size mode at the moment um, and I've just lined up this composition and I think it's nice. I think it sort of leans to the left a little bit, um, but I just think as a as a an image and the and the story behind the image because these these boulders aren't like natural rocks. They're bits of concrete and there's bricks in them and things like that. So 
you can see that it's part of an industry and I think the combination of the the industry and the history around here and the, the landscape um, lends itself quite nicely to sort of the, the general story. I think I've managed to frame it in such a way that that the reflections don't overlap so I'm cutting it close a little bit because I, I want to compose it in a certain way so I don't get too much background in but I think this works quite nicely. I'm shooting it landscape at the moment but I think I'm going to change it to portrait. Yeah I'm going to change it to portrait I think. It's very strange being surrounded by all these birds. They're just going off on one. One went off earlier. I thought it was an alarm for something, but it was just a pheasant being annoying. I think this works a lot better in portrait, actually. Might recompose it in a second. Let's see how this comes out. <laughs> it's so minimal, it's crazy. I think. Mr. Craig Adams will be very impressed with this. There's also a wooden post just sticking out of the water here. I think I might be pushing it a bit for the how how far can you push minimalism. But it, it looks really cool and again, just this scenery here just looks so cool. And I think focusing on the the, the finer details around here is the only way I'm going to be able to make a coherent image. Because as you can see there's not much here um, because it's all covered up by this mist which is great, makes for a great background I mean you couldn't ask for a, a better better backdrop could you? this is absolutely incredible I think it was definitely worth definitely worth the 4.30 start I think so I was actually just about to leave and I noticed these, I sort of, well, I guess I walked past them when I first came in here, but these thistles just sort of covered in these spiders webs. And I think they look incredible. Um, and there's just one here. That's sort of reaching out into, into, into the mist. Um, so I might try and do something with these. Try and isolate one of them. Or a few of them, maybe three. Or even just do some more detailed shots of these. They are incredible, they look, they look amazing. Let's try and frame this guy here. He's the guy who I thought was reaching out. So, my only concern is obviously I don't want to cut it off halfway down um, with the, the water's edge, but I guess I could just play around for a bit. I mean, I've got, I've got all the shots I want, so I guess I can just play around, try and get some something a bit more. Interesting. So I framed it up on the 85 and it does look really nice. Um, I'm having to sort of stick in the bushes a little bit, but I think it works really well. Um, I'm going to try shooting at a shallow aperture as well. And I know that landscape photographers tend to go towards sort of the F8, F11 region of things. Um, even up to like F16, um, but F11 is sort of like the sweet spot. But I think I'm going to try and shoot at maybe like F4. Uh, maybe even go down to like 2.8 to see if I can really just pinpoint that one sort of stem of uh, thistle in the background. So let's do that. So that worked really nicely at f4. I think I am going to drop it down to 2.8. Yeah, that looks really nice. Really sort of surreal. I think we're done. Oh. Excellent. Really excellent. Little spiky boys. <laughs> Save the day. Um, I'm gonna pack down, I think. I think I've got all that I want. Um, yeah. Excellent morning of something completely different. I think, again, I just wanna highlight the importance of doing something a little bit different every day. And not, not every day. Uh, highlight the importance of doing something a little bit unique and a little bit different to what you're used to every now and then just to refresh your mind um, make you think a little bit harder so I guess all I have to say is uh, thank you for watching this video um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, don't rip me to pieces in the comments about 
are your, my uh, uh, shocking landscape photography skills at the moment. So, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I can promise you that. So, uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. I hope that looked cool.